so hello my people welcome back to my channel I am Cindy B this is uh, what is the name of my channel I keep forgetting what is the name of my channel oh my goodness this is real life with Cindy B <laughs> reactions and more real life with Cindy B reactions and more the other channel name is unique expressions decor and more Please subscribe to uh, both channels and ring the notification bell because over there on Unique Expressions Decor and more, I am going to be doing a whole lot of decorating, a whole lot of baking, and a whole lot of uh, thrift store shopping and uh, shopping hauls is what's going to be going on over there. So, and there's going to be some ASMR thrown in as well. Um, that those are my filler videos. I throw in the ASMR videos over there and show you my decor at the same time because I am getting ready to start posting on that channel on a regular basis and right now I'm just making sure that there is something there for you to familiarize yourself with something there for you to watch until all the videos get uploaded I can't tell you it's not easy maintaining two channels managing two channels <sighs> so anyway this is my last ride for the day and once I complete this ride I will have um, exercise on the bike uh, for more than something is wrong it's closer than it was <laughs> closer than it was before I will have exercise on the bike for uh, 15 miles total today and I'm going to begin by clearing out this machine now as to it said 8 miles that was the last ride that I took but that included my cool down time. I don't share my cool down time in my videos because I really just want my videos to be between 30 and 35 minutes. So after I finish my ride, I go ahead and I do a cool down. And we're already 2 minutes and 32 seconds into this video. And uh, that was not the sound that you thought it was. It was my fabric coming down on my chair. But if I were to have passed gas, I would simply say, excuse me and not feel bad about it. Yeah, I say that. So anyway, um, here I am. And uh, I set something up the wrong way. I don't know what it was. But the angle don't seem to be exactly the same. So here I am. Uh, and because this is my third ride for the day and it's near the end of the evening, this, is, this ride is just about 30 minutes. It's not about getting in a great workout because I had two other rides today where I got in a great workout in both of them. So now, tonight is just about enjoying the ride, just unwinding. And uh, I'm listening to the sound of the fan. Plus I can hear my coffee pot in there making these little noises. Um, while the tea is steeping and it's keeping the water hot so um, no ASMR to, tonight other than the sound of the fan which you might not be able to hear and the sound of the coffee pot doing its thing so I'm just going to enjoy my at the end of the, the day 30 minute ride and uh, my fall in silence for a while. I believe I have my, my thumbnails all ready for this video. I just have to put, the only thing I have to add to it is uh, how many miles I went and the amount of miles I have covered in a 30 minute period. It always appears on my thumbnail. So, and in this last ride, I decided that um, when I do my third ride for the day, I'm just going to leave it at the tension of six because I think it would be too much on me. 
to in the in the uh, third ride for the day, which would be in the 90 minutes of working out. I think it would be too much on me to take it from a tension of six to uh, six to eight. So I'm just gonna leave it at six and just enjoy the ride. And then when I come back in here tomorrow, my first two rides will be five minutes at six, five minutes at seven, five minutes at eight, and then I'll bring the tension back down, five minutes to seven, five minutes to six, and uh, get through my 30 minutes that way. Say goodbye to you guys and continuing continue to pedal slowly for my cool down. <sighs> yeah, when I do the cool down in the video, it turns out to be a 40, a 40, 40 45 minute video. <laughs> 45, 47, 48, and uh, I just want to keep it between 30 and 35. <sighs> it's a quicker upload time. Um, it's a decent amount of time to work out if somebody wants to work out with me watching the video um, it's a decent amount of time to stretch and you know uh, taking a half an hour to just chill out in the course of your day and just take a load off and watch a, a video 30 minutes is 30 35 minutes is a good amount of time before you get back to what it is you're working on or what you have to do 30 minutes is enough time for you to you know enjoy a cup of coffee and you know a snack um, that kind of thing so just keeping it at 30 minutes and whatever distance I ride and those first two rides I give it everything I got I give it everything I got without trying to kill myself. I give it everything I got. No drill sergeant, no, 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 what do you call him? <laughs> no trainer in my face talking about, come on, come on, come on, you can do it. No, I just give it what I got. I give it what I got to do. Not trying to impress anybody, just, I give it an honest shot at a decent workout for 60 minutes, with like a 10 minute space in between, resting period in between. And then several hours later, like about this time, I come back and I just take a regular ride. I can't remember when this is going to premiere, so I'm not even going to tell you when it's going to premiere. <sighs> because I know I have two already scheduled to premiere. So I'm not going to confuse you and tell you when you're going to see this one. <laughs> but <laughs> you will see the thumbnail and the date for it to premiere. You will see that up there um, tonight. And uh, when I finish with this ride, I have two videos, including this one, to upload. One is going to premiere tonight, and then this one will premiere another day. And once I have done that, while they're uploading, I will be uh, multitasking. Um, I think while one is uploading, I'm going to jump in the shower. And when that finishes, then when I finish my shower, that, that will probably be uh, <coughs> finished. And then I'll upload the other one. Oh, so I didn't have brain parts.
Got my brand doing this. In case anybody is new to the channel, you know what I'm talking about. I live in an apartment complex in a uh, <coughs> questionable section of town. Far better than the area that I came from. Now. It's close to a good section. Of it's close to a, a good area, but kind of right on the border. And uh, the people here do a lot of smoking of everything they can get their hands on. Let's put it that way. They do a lot of smoking, everything they can get their hands on. So uh, I believe cook some stuff up for others to smoke. So the uh, gases and the fumes get into my apartment, they get into my head, and I get messed up. Tonight is a good night because I haven't had to fling the door open and step outside. I haven't had to fling the windows open, but I know not to turn on the air conditioner or the heater. So I was in the kitchen for a while, working on some stuff, about an hour, 45 minutes, I guess, and uh, they started to rise while I was in it, and now my brain is a little foggy, and I'm sitting here, and there's a vent up there, and it's broken little thing that opens and closes it and I can't get it closed but I did manage to get it so that the little slats in there are going upward opposed to coming down upward opposed to down up opposed to down north goes to south <laughs> oh, Lord. you know today uh, and it has really been bothering me. The place that I came from, it was bad, really bad over there. Oh boy, was it bad. And people really were dropping like flies because there was so much drug use. And it was the drugs that was killing me and the breathing problems everybody was having. I was telling my community health care worker that four people um, Anyway, I'm not even going to get into all of that, but <clears throat> so for the people who are new, I deal with that. If you come in and you try to figure out why she's talking like that, why is she having trouble getting it out, why does she repeat herself, um, why is she so forgetful? Uh, why didn't she finish that thought? What is she talking about when she's talking about fumes and gases? What does she mean when she says America's test kitchen is at it again? Talking about people who cook drugs. When you hear all that stuff I'm talking about, um, and when you notice all of that stuff, it's because the gases that are formed from the stuff they're cooking and the illegal stuff they're cooking and the illegal stuff they're smoking. It builds up in this unit and it gets into me and it messes me up. Back in the day, be back in the day this time, being a year ago, two years ago, two and a half years ago, the past two and a half years, I used to go to the emergency room thinking that, you know, I was having a stroke or a heart attack. And they have done all these tests, and I'm now at a new facility. I have a new team of doctors, and they have looked for the same stuff and sent me out for testing, and it is not that. So I don't need to worry. But the longer I stay in places where I am, uh, breathing all of this in, 
all of those things could very well happen. I could end up with a severe lung issue, more severe than it is now. My asthma got worse at the other place. I attribute it to, I blame it on uh, all the drug fumes and the gases, the chemicals I have unfortunately inhaled due to all the activity around me at the complex. So um, that's what I mean when I say all that stuff. And when you see something that doesn't look quite right, it's because I'm messed up. I'm just messed up from what it is they're doing. If I suddenly dash away from the computer, I can't take it. Or if I burst out and say, what is your problem? I'm talking to them. <laughs> this is what I'm talking to. I'm talking to them and those people over there and those people right there. <sighs> because it has just um, stolen a lot from me. Made breathing and everything difficult. Sometimes it gets so bad in here that when I take a step, I feel robotic. Like every step I take, every move I make is just herky-jerky. I will become very jittery. It makes me very angry. It makes my brain feel like it's sizzling or throbbing. My eyelids start twitching. My finger will do stuff like this. And uh, my chest will get very tight and it'll feel like my heart is just going to pop. And these are all the things that happen. Um, when what they're doing is very intense. And I try not to talk about it all the time, but it's hard when you have a real life channel and you're sharing your life with people and you're in live streams for hours at a time and you make frequent videos throughout the day. It's hard to not talk about what's happening. So when I Hey, when I moved in here in October, I said this is not, I'm not going to give it a lot of, I'm not going to talk about it a lot on my channel, but it has since gotten worse since I have been here, and I have found myself talking about it a lot more, because more and more of the hours, more for more and more hours throughout the day, I am aware of it, and I'm affected by it. It affects the way I think, it affects the way I talk, it affects the way I move. Um, it affects my memory. It affects me in a lot of negative ways. And uh, I look at my videos today, and my videos three years ago, I was so sharp three years ago. There was so much clarity three years ago. Um, my vocabulary was different three years ago. And everything has just been changing. I was even lighter in weight three years ago. Um, just a year ago, um, I was able to, I was far more articulate than I am now. So a lot has changed. And I have my moments of clarity where it all comes back, but it takes um, it takes them going. It they have to go broke. They have to not be able to get what it is they need, and they have to go on vacation or be hiding out from the law, <laughs> be missing for a few days, and it has to be like two or three days in here a week where I'm not dealing with all their fumes and I spend more time outside the unit for me to uh, have uh, more clarity for me 
to be able to uh, talk to you without the brain farts. For me to not have uh, be doing a video, feel my eyes start to flutter, my eyelids start to twitch and stuff. Um, and sometimes it gets bad. I'm about to demonstrate it. I'll be talking and I'll do this. <laughs> and all these little things that happen that suggest, you know, you're having a stroke or something. Yeah. And sometimes I'm, it's, it's like stuttering. <laughs> I'm going to demonstrate it again. So, <laughs> and I, <laughs> all this stuff will happen. But usually when I'm doing a video, it'll be mild. You can see it real quick with the lip movement and you'll hear it real quick and you'll like probably lean in and it's like what, is, what, 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 what was that that's all of that is what that is is what that is yeah it's not parkinson's it's not multiple sclerosis it's not a stroke not many strokes uh, not about to have a heart attack. Um, it's not, what's that other thing? Uh, some kind of palsy. Some kind of palsy that, you know, does something to your face. And then an hour or a day later, it's, it's normal look, looking again. I can't remember some kind of palsy. It's not any of that. People, boy, have I been tested. And this new doctor was telling me that um, some of the things, she said, don't rule it all out. She said some of the things that are happening um, could still be as a result of what you were breathing in at the old place. The old place they really did have a meth lab. It was proven. And they shut it down. It really and truly was a meth lab right below me. And they shut it down. So that wasn't an uh, educated guess. It was actually that. And they shut that SHIT down and they boarded it up and they cleaned it out, but the meth addicts kept breaking into it and setting up shop again, is what they did. And one night it got real bad. They, they broke into it, set it up, pulled the board up, had it open like a door. The police came for another reason and happened to see people um, see the light on, the board pulled from it, and uh, well, people, it was crazy. Well, I lived over a meth house for two years. For two years. And uh, first year, I didn't know. I thought I just had mold or something in the house, and I had the ductwork cleaned out, and uh, the vents cleaned out. And then... Um, that was the first year. First year I didn't know, so I had the vents cleaned out. The second year I knew it was a meth house. Um, no, the second year I knew it was drugs. And toward the end of the second year, I realized it was a meth house. And it, I stayed there for two and a half years. It took me two and a half years to get moved from there to here. And so um, the last six months of it was pure hell. Pure hell. Because it's like when they shut it down, pe people were just coming, coming. But when they shut it down, um, it just messed up business and people got angry. And they got frustrated. They didn't have any place to flop. And the anger and the frustration caused them to, to, to smoke and cook anything, use any ingredients. And it just got far worse. And so then I got here. 
and everything seemed to be cool for about a week and then I started smelling something and I thought it was some kind of food but I said no I smelled that same thing over there and then now I have been here for coming up on six months they're in full swing I don't know what they do I don't know what they're doing they're doing a lot of it. and it's got me all messed up and for the new people there's no place I can go I'm just trying to do something with these two channels and maybe I'll end up with 500,000 subscribers and I can leave the housing program get myself free of all of this and uh, go someplace choose where I go you know a lot of people get to choose where they go the chances of ending up okay the chances of ending up someplace where they're smoking the drugs and cooking the drugs and we're talking about weed mixed with all kinds of SHIT and we're talking about heroin we're talking about what's that other stuff meth and uh, I can't remember what that other stuff is called we're talking about all this stuff the chances of selecting your own apartment whether you're in a housing program or not selecting your own apartment and ending up with neighbors who are getting down the way the neighbors get down here and the last place I, I lived in or you know slim you might, might find some place where they smoke weed weed sometime that will be a blessing in disguise um, but being in a housing program and having them select it for you being in a housing program having come from a shelter and living in a housing program um, the chances are of ending up like this every place you move having like four or five people right by your unit doing that stuff is very great is very great but if I were to leave the program if you were to go rent someplace the chances are not nearly as great um, you'd be uh, you'd be lying to yourself if you believed you'd be setting yourself up for heartbreak and misery for a great disappointment rather if you live in the program and the program is moving you and you strongly believed that there was not going to be any drug activity any prostitution any drug sales and use and all that stuff near you I just kind of thought that maybe when they move me I'll just have to deal with somebody smoking weed every now and then opposed to all that they smoke they smoke whatever they can get their hands on it's whatever their budget allows for that time period and so far I have detected what they like for like a week out of every month like a week out of every month it slows down you barely smell anything now I guess they're just waiting on that check I guess they're just waiting on that check so anyway um, enough of that 199.7 calories burned 200 down um, 26 minutes and uh, 27 minutes and one second into this ride. Now I'm getting a headache. It's 
So you do little things like exercise to make yourself feel good. Drink your water, your juice to make your juice. And uh, what they do that gets into your unit and then gets into your system it just negate is that the word I'm looking for it just makes you feel like everything you have done to create balance to make yourself feel better has been for nothing because it comes through and it gets in your head and it affects every part of your body when you see somebody mess up on that stuff and you see them walking around in the parking lot in a herky-jerky fashion and they're standing there talking to somebody and they're high on that stuff and they're doing like this I feel like that's happening inside my body but I can clearly see myself and see that I'm not doing that but inside my, my body beneath this skin I feel like I'm looking at one of them that is doing like this I feel like when I get up to walk, I'm walking like I see them walk while they're high on their stuff. And it's very scary. And you can't explain it in a way that leaves anybody feeling that you're sane. You cannot explain it in any way. Because even paramedics will look at you like, you know, it's not possible to get that messed up. It, it could raise your blood pressure. I'm saying that it could raise your blood pressure, yeah. Um, the fumes of it could. And the stress from dealing with it. But I don't think that it can get into your system in a way that would produce all of that. And uh, they are so wrong. But they said it's not pop. They looked at me and said, I'm not saying it's not possible. It's just not... I don't think it's likely that that could be the case, so we're going to take it to the hospital. Because it sounds just like you might be having a stroke. And it's just never the case. It has always been the mess getting in and doing all of that. So, yeah, it's interesting how crazy stuff can happen and when you try to explain it to somebody. They, they, it's so foreign to them. It's so odd that you're not believed and they think you're crazy. You feel like it's driving you crazy. Nothing you could do about it. Because I used to ask the paramedics, I said, well, isn't there some, is there a test? Can you just do a blood test? to see if it's in my system. I mean, because if it's affecting me like this, even though I didn't take it, it's entering into my system and messing up my nervous, what is it called, your nervous system? It's messing everything up. Everything is haywire inside of my, my body. And I'm like, oh God, see it like right now, when I just went back. It's just a lot. <laughs> and I'm thinking, if it can do all of this, the gases. I had to do research on this to realize that, you know, when they cook this stuff, gases are produced. That's why they always say, you know, meth houses are very dangerous. They could go poofy. Because they're using all this crazy stuff. Acids, etc. And mixing all these crazy chemicals together. And uh, cooking it up. And all this stuff can explode. And when you're mixing all these chemicals and stuff together, you're creating gases. And the gases go someplace, they go everywhere they can, through every crack and every crevice, as does the fumes. But for some strange reason, people don't seem to understand this. They're like, oh, you just talk crazy. Oh, can't nobody smell it but you. <laughs> Okay, nobody smells but me and the people doing the drugs and cooking the drugs. Whew, Lord Jesus. People come over after everything has disappeared. 
smells man. I smell something, but it smells like some kind of food being cooked. I know there's a lot of Haitians around here, and they might be cooking goat meat. And so I'm like, what you talking about? They never smell no goat meat. <sighs> that left me not being able to think clearly, or left me feeling like I needed to vomit. I was walking like a robot. I ain't never smelled no goat meat cooking that made me need to run out and get some air. I get tired of people saying stupid stuff to me. <laughs> Lord Jesus. And just so that you know, Haitians aren't the only people who eat goat meat. So it's kind of a kind of a racist thing to say. So anyway, 33 minutes and 12 seconds, and I am finished with my last ride. Whew, talk through some stuff. So my mind was on other things until I started feeling the effects. And then my focus shifted, and it took me back. Oh, Lord. Now I feel like sticking my head out the window. Oh Lord! <laughs> Ooh. And this is my this is the way my night ends. This is the way my night ends. I'm all messed up after everything I did. Ate my meals, did my exercise, drank my water, so on and so forth. And I I still end my night feeling quite sick. I started my day this way. I, I, it was after I ate. I was all messed up. I was terribly nauseous. I was everything. And it took me a while to realize because sometimes you can't smell it, but you get the effects of it. Sometimes you cannot smell it. And because they, their recipes are changing all the time. And a lot of times when people are smoking and cooking meth, you can't smell it. And then other times it's a real strong, clean smell, like you're in a hospital. And then other times it stinks and it could smell like um, pet urine. Um, it all depends on what it is that they use. And then there's this other stuff that it, it's, you know, sometimes it smells very, something it smells very sweet and perfumey. And that's drug related too. And I have to do research and I have to talk to the people in the leasing office because when I read all of this stuff, it clearly says that um, this sweet odor, this intense dryer sheets and stuff that you smell um, could be this drug, that drug, and the other thing being, being cooked or, or used. It will carry this fragrance. And uh, so I had to ask the leasing office, anybody got a dryer? Nobody over here. These are not the upgraded apartments. And so we don't have washer dryer hookups. We do not have washer dryer hookups. But that lady, every time she opens her door, it's like 10,000 dryers. She's just like walking right past the laundromat. It's like, Jesus, you got a fabric softener, dryer sheets, and all of that stuff. And I'm thinking, how do you stay in there? You open the door, and it all floods out. And I'm at this end. And they're down at that end. And even when you walk past it, with the door closed, you're like, damn, what are you doing in there? And how can you stay in the unit? So anyway, I'm done. Um, I forgot to look at the distance, but I stopped pedaling 
it's I stopped pedaling at seven. I, I, I stopped pedaling at seven. I'm no longer pedaling. And when you stop pedaling, um, it stops recording. But um, I didn't really go into a cool down because I was only uh, biking at a speed of six. At a this is what it does to me, all the fumes. I was only biking at a tension of six. It was set, the tension was set to six. So this tells me um, seven miles is what I was doing. And uh, at 30 minutes, I was quitting and called myself going into a cool down and I was talking. But by the time I stopped pedaling, it said seven, seven miles. So, um, 34 minutes was my time. 34 minutes was my actual time, and seven miles was my... Seven miles was my distance. So, um... This video is over. It's longer than it usually is. This screen says 41 minutes and this says 34 and that's because of how they talk. How they talk it since I stopped that. But anyway, people, uh, I talked about everything that was on my mind. Stay safe out there, my people. And uh, remember, give someone hope today and every day because it's a very easy thing to do. Stay focused as well. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for listening. And uh, just thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Peace.